New England and Indianapolis certainly didn't disappoint. Neither did Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. What does Week 11 have in store in the NFL? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz. Glad to be with you here on the End Zone. Presented by Nuvi Phone, the navigational phone by Garmin. CBSSports.com NFL columnist Clark Judge. CBS Sports is Ian Eagle. Glad to be with you guys. Uh, and, of course, every single week we do the look ahead and what to look forward to. And, you know, sometimes in college we always talk about a team with a big victory and then they have the letdown the next week. When you're Indianapolis and you're used to being 9-0 and you're coming off a big win against New England, you don't have to worry about that. But So what does Baltimore have to worry about in trying to upset Indianapolis this weekend? Well, Baltimore has to worry about the same thing that everyone else has to worry about, and that's Peyton Manning. Baltimore has some issues with its cornerbacks, and I've seen Baltimore a couple times this year. They have trouble in single coverage, and that really affects everything with the pass defense, even with the run defense, in terms of the number of people you can commit the receivers. I think... Indianapolis just has too many receivers and too much Peyton Manning for these guys to, to really have a chance. Plus, you look at Indy's gone into Baltimore the uh, last three times. It's won. It's had six straight against Baltimore. And who are the Colts? They used to be the Baltimore Colts, the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> yeah, every time you think the teams have figured out a way to beat Indianapolis, the Colts find a way to win. They epitomize that kind of team. And while I'm still not sure they have the balance that they need ultimately come playoff time in terms of running the football and passing it as of right now, it's been irrelevant. I think Baltimore, as Clark just touched on the secondary, which used to be an elite secondary, they're not at that same level anymore. They're a little better than average, and that's just not what we've come to expect from the Ravens defensively through the years. And they're going to find out the hard way. You can't pressure Peyton Manning. He knows where the pressure is coming from. He gets rid of the football as well as any quarterback in the NFL. He is tough to sack and the Ravens thrive on getting sacks and turning that into something positive. I don't think they're going to get many of them. Guys, eight, eight games of the first nine, he's thrown over 300. He's on pace to break Dan Marino's record. Something that Drew Brees was on pace to do last year and, and came up just short. Do you think Peyton Manning goes over that 5,084 mark? Uh, no, I don't, because if you know what Indianapolis does, once they start running the table, they wind it down at the They'll end. shut it start, down. And they, yeah, and that happens to a lot of teams, and, and they shut it down for a good reason. You don't want this guy hurt. So I think what they'll do is they'll pull back once they have their division wrapped up, once they know they have maybe its home field advantage yeah. wrapped up, he'll sit down. All right, another big game this weekend is for the battle and the lead of the AFC West. And, it, you know, same situation at the end of last season where Denver was falling apart. Right. And San Diego was coming on. Now, it's different in the fact that it's in the middle of the season, not the last game of the season. But look, circumstances are pretty similar. And San Diego, if they continue to win and they win this ballgame, they may run away with the AFC West. San Diego's played this season with a chip on its shoulder. I think early on, everybody just assumed they would win the division. Denver comes out of the chute playing as well as they played. And people's opinions change in the AFC West. I believe they're kind of using that as a badge of honor now. Phillip Rivers, he might be one of the most disliked players in the NFL among the players. <laughs> but I got to tell you, from just watching him week in and week out, I have a lot of respect for him. Mm -hmm. The guy knows how to win. I think he's liked by his teammates. And ultimately, that's all that really matters, what's in that locker room. LaDainian Tomlinson, there seems to be a new energy with him. And defensively, they're beginning to come around again. So uh, the Chargers, to me, are clearly the better team, although they trail in the standings right now. Uh, to me, it's just a matter of time. Denver's in big trouble. And Clark, Kyle Orton, who they're expecting to go this weekend, he's got the ankle injury. He was on crutches in, in Washington on the side. And he hasn't played well the last couple of weeks. He had a couple of blown coverages that he had the long balls to Brandon Marshall. But after that, they didn't come out and do anything. This is an issue moving forward here with, with Denver. Well, I mean, it's an issue if the defense isn't playing as well as it did the first you know, six games. You look at that defense, they were lights out, and they're going to have to be lights out for Kyle Orton to be successful. He's not the kind of guy you want to come back on teams with. Now, people forget against Washington. I mean, they were leading when he left the ball game. He's a guy that can manage that position, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. But if you put him in a position where he has to win a game, it's going to be trouble. What about Atlanta and the Giants? And it's, you know, we forgot about New York for one week because they were on a bye, but now they they aren't on a bye anymore. Yeah. And they're still that that four game losing streak is still shining bright here. And they, they got to take on the Falcons. But what a bye it was! If you're going to have a bye <laughs> week and you come back and everything around you has fallen apart, and you might emerge out of this looking pretty good. The Dallas Cowboys don't take advantage. The Philadelphia Eagles don't take advantage. Injuries now with Westbrook, uh, Cowboys, the, the up and down nature. Before the bye, uh, I would have told you that the way things were looking, the Giants probably were not going to be a playoff team. I wouldn't say that as quickly as I would have a week ago. The way things are lining up, obviously they still have some important games left on their schedule, including this one, mm -hmm. and against a team like Atlanta, 
they're still trying to figure out who they are. And I think we're all trying to figure out as well. The Falcons, to me, have taken a step back. You have so many teams bunched together at five and four and four and five yeah. in the NFC. There's still a lot of work to be done in the NFC to see who emerges as a wild card team. Yeah, you know, I, I saw Atlanta last week, and they're one and four on the road now. They're not a good road team. And last year they were four and four. Mike Smith said you have to at least hold serve yep. on the road, which yep. they did last year to be successful. They're not doing this 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 year, and they do have some issues. With Matt Ryan, he's not playing as no. well right now as he did a year ago. He has had at least two interceptions yeah. in four of the last five games. And another issue, Michael Turner's injury. Yeah, What's right. going to happen with right. that? And that could be a huge, huge. issue at all over week 11. Right. Michael Turner, Brian Westbrook, Ronnie Brown, Kyle Lorton, uh, all Troy Polamalu, yep. Cedric right. Benson. That could be one of the main issues all over week 11. That'll do it for the end zone. And in terms of our look ahead to week 11 here, presented by Nuvi Phone, the navigation phone, presented by Garmin. Take a look at what it can do, as we do every single week. We we'll highlight all the, the features of the Garmin, the Nuvi Phone, uh, navigation, as you'd expect from the Garmin, email, you can text. It's a great asset to a phone, and you get AT&T service with that as well. Clark Judge and Ian Eagle. I'm Jason Horowitz. We'll see you next week on The End Zone. Take care.